Hey YouTube, I just wanted to get on right before I get to work and talk to you guys a, a few things uh, that have been on my mind. Um, I am about ready to do a two hour shift. I am doing a overnight, um, it's called a RON. It's, um, it's an airplane that comes in about eight o'clock and it's called Remain Overnight. And we just bring the plane in, we take the bags off and we clean the plane. So that is what I am going to be doing today for my two hour shift. But I was just thinking about a few things and how the travel industry is so different than any other industry. People don't go into it for the money. People go into it for the love of the industry. The industry is amazing and it gives you the opportunity to meet people from around the world, work with wonderful airline peeps who are like no other, and just also just to be able to um, travel the world. Traveling the world is the number one perk of the industry. And so because of all those perks and because it's such a high demand profession, career, job, um, whatever you call it, um, they don't really pay that much. I mean, I know that you can think that maybe flight attendants pay a lot. It's not a lot of money. Um, after you have to pay for the union, after you have to, you know, if you commute, you have to pay for, um, a crash pad. If you don't commute, you pay for an apartment. Um, there's so many expenses. You have to eat out if you do not bring your own food and that can get expensive. There's so many different things. Pilots, the same exact thing. They also come in with a lot of loans because they went to flight school. Um, and then for a ramper or a customer service agent, it starts off kind of low. Um, a lot of in airlines, it does move up, but when you come into it, it's really, really low. And so my advice to anyone that is going into the industry is to remember that um, do it for the love of, of it all or um, you need to make sure you also have money, other money coming in if you need it. Um, I'm thinking of about three people in my entire station. I think we have like 60, 70 people in our station. Um, pretty much everyone has at least one other job or they have a side hustle, which means that they work for Uber, they do real estate, they um, work for Lyft. Um, I have another job. I am an, a respiratory therapist. I work about a day or two a week at the hospital and I kind of try to do it so that I can make my schedule work in both places that I'm not feeling like I'm working too much and away from home too much, so that's why. But I need, I love respiratory, I love doing what I do, but I do need that job for the money. And then I do this job just for the love of it. Um, I'm just trying to think um, what I was going to say. Um, if you are going into the industry, just make sure that you're financially ready. Um, if you do not have another job. Um, because just um, a, a little bit of advice is maybe to get rid of your, you know, your if you have any credit cards, try to pay them off. Um, any kind of extra expenses, try to just get rid of them. Whether it's a car payment, maybe lower your student loans, different things like that maybe um, pay a little bit less in your housing if you can, if you're renting. Um, I know a lot of people don't have the option to do that, but just make sure that you have enough money coming in because um, if you're struggling, you won't even be able to use the flight benefits. You won't be able to travel so much. So to be able to have both and to have that clear mind of being able to go and do what you love and yet not feel strapped for money is so important. Um, I'm trying to think, um, it, in the comments below, can you guys go ahead and tell me what you guys do? Whether if you're in the airline industry, is this your only job or do you have other things that you do? I also wanted to talk to you guys about, um, mentally, um, just being prepared for when you come into the industry because it is so unpredictable. For instance, um, sometimes you think your shift is just say you're working from four in the morning to six in the morning and all of a sudden there's a mechanical. That happened yesterday for me. Um, it was four to six in the morning and um, we were all ready to leave. We had, I mean, it was, it was so smooth. And all of a sudden um, the pilot said, um, we need to get something checked out. And it ended up being mechanical, which um, was um, a dead battery because I guess the lights had been on or something like that. And so there was a dead battery. So because our station is a smaller station, we couldn't um, just have the mechanics come from our station. We had to um, 
get an, a neighboring station, which is about an hour away, but they took six hours. So thank the Lord, I'm halfway senior enough not to have, I didn't have to stay. There was a few of us, I think it was the top three that could leave, but the bottom few had to wait until that flight left. So they went from a two hour shift to probably an eight hour shift. And if they had another job that day, I mean, that would have been really rough for them. So hopefully they didn't. Hopefully that, that was the only thing they had or their only responsibility. So um, I just remember even in flight attendant school, what was the tree that they told us to be? I think they said something like be a, gosh, what tree was that? Um, palm tree where you sway. It's all about flexibility. So just remember you need to be flexible. You need to be financially ready and um, just, just be ready. It's just it's like no other and if you love the industry if you love the people if you love airplanes it's so worth it it's so worth it I just kind of wanted to come up and give you some advice um, and this is just off the top of my head I think that eventually I would like to do a more in-depth video on this and and do the key points but just to kind of throw some things out there for you guys I hope you guys are having a great day and I will talk to you soon okay bye